Hi everybody, it is Disney Queen Skelly here, and uh, today I'm going to be giving you guys fun facts on the Jungle Cruise. I hope you guys enjoy. It was supposed to have live animals. When Walt envisioned Jungle Cruise, he wanted to use live animals. However, he realized that there might be some danger in using live animals in an attraction, and he couldn't stop animals from sleeping during the day. So he decided audio animatronic animals would be easier and safer to use. Walt's idea for live animals didn't go away and later showed up at Disney's Animal Kingdom. It wasn't always funny. Again, when Walt first created Jungle Cruise, it was more of a documentary style than the witty attraction we know today. The funny scenes and silly script were added years after the attraction opened. Walt promoted the attraction. While Disneyland was under construction, Walt was at the height of his career. It was not uncommon to see him in television shows and commercials advertising his new theme park. Before the riverbeds of Jungle Cruise were filled with water, Walt drove a Nash Rambler, one of the attraction's sponsors, through the dirt and past Schweitzer Falls, showing off the ride construction, including the basic construction of the original animatronics. This ride inspired Walt to say that his parks will never be completed. One day, Walt was walking through Disneyland, as he often did, when he heard a young boy ask his mom to cruise through the jungle. She replied, no, we did that last time. Upon hearing that, Walt decided that he needed to keep changing and improving everything in Disneyland, and later in all of the Disney parks that bear his name so guests would keep coming back. Some very famous people were once Jungle Cruise skippers. Kevin Costner, John Lasseter, and Nixon's press secretary, Ron Ziegler, all got their start on the Jungle Cruise. Lasseter, who is currently the chief creative officer of Pixar Animation Studios and Disney Toon Studios and the principal creative advisor for Walt Disney Imagineering, said that Jungle Cruise is the best ride in the whole park. The exotic jungle plans aren't really exotic. When Walt started building Disneyland, money was added at a premium. He had convinced ABC, a company which Disney now owns, to put up the financial support for the park. However, due to the tight budgets, he had some tough decisions to make, like whether to provide public restrooms or air conditioning. As such, he really had to find ways to out costs in attractions. One way that he did that was to use plants native to the area instead of shipping in plants from tropical environments. Walt and his Imagineers decided to plant orange trees upside down and let lines twist and grow around their exposed roots. The water is cleaner than it, than it looks. Disney has had some issues with some dirty water in the past, so they always make sure that the water is clean. However, the water in Jungle Cruise needs to look like the murky rivers of the Amazon. Instead of using dirty water, they dye the water with the brown, green, and blue. Besides providing authenticity, the dirty water also conceals the track that cruise ships actually run on, and the fact that the water is less than four feet deep in most areas. Disney recycled an airplane for the attraction. Walt purchased in a Lockhead Model 12 Electra Jr. airplane and used it to scope out the land that would become Disney World. At the time, this was a pretty costly investment. When they took it out of service, they decided that it needed to serve some purpose, so they used the back half of it for the plane crash scene near the hippo pool in Magic Kingdom. The front half of the plane was used in the Casablanca scene in the great movie ride at Disney's Hollywood Studios, which is now closed. The ride is pretty low tech. Jungle Cruise was a tall endeavor, but Imagineers actually used some pretty low tech tricks to accomplish some really impressive effects. For example, consider how the animal's eyes glow as you sail through the Asian temple. One might think that they use some kind of really cool technology to make that happen. However, it turns out that the effect is very simple. The eyes are just made of marbles that are painted with the reflective coating. The key reference is Swiss Family Robinson. Just next door to the Jungle Cruise is the Swiss Family Treehouse, which was also an opening day attraction in Magic Kingdom. As a nod to its neighbor, there are two shipping crates with one addressed to Thomas Kirk Esquire, M. Jones Cartographers, LTD, Field Office, Island of Borodano. This is reference to the movie Swiss Family Robinson, in which Tommy Kirk plays 
Ernest Robinson and the main character in Misadventures of Merle Jones. James MacArthur, who played Fritz Robinson, also played Danny Williams, who is famous for saying, Book him, Dano, in Hawaii Five-O. The second crate says Kenneth Anakin, director of imports, Weiss Supply Company, Colony of New Guinea. Ken Anakin directed Swiss Family Robinson, and Johann Weiss wrote the book on which the movie is based. One of the boats sank. St. Kuru Sadi at the Magic Kingdom sank in 2004 after the boat took, an, took on more water than it could hold. Since most of the river is just a few feet deep, the boat wasn't too damaged and no one was injured. It was refurbished and still runs today. Catherine Hepburn had a cameo. Jungle Cruise is inspired by The African Queen, a movie starring Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn. At the end of the ride, Trader Sam, a headhunter, proposes a deal with the riders, two heads for one of yours. Keen riders might notice that, that one of the shrunken heads Trader Sam is holding looks a lot like Katherine Hepburn. It was featured in a Kodak commercial. Ed Sullivan from the Ed Sullivan Show partnered up with Kodak, a longtime Disney sponsor, to shoot a commercial in 1959 for the new Brownie camera. Sullivan says that the camera is smart enough to shoot accurately exposed pictures in deep shade or bright sunlight and move from dark to light or vice versa very quickly. It uses Jungle Cruise in Disneyland as an example of this. Some trees in the Disneyland are older than the park. The Dominguez Palm, which sits just outside the entrance of Jungle Cruise is di in Disneyland, is a large palm tree that dates back to 1896. The palm is named after the family who lived on the property before Walt built his park. The owner, a rancher, requested that Disney save this tree, regardless of what they did with the other vegetation. However, this the 15-ton tree was located where Disney wanted to put the parking lot, so Disney dug it up and moved it from the parking lot to Adventureland. And those are your facts for the Jungle Cruise. Um, tomorrow, I'm taking the day off to celebrate my birthday again with my parents and hubby. But on the 9th, you'll be getting uh, fun facts for a society dog show. So be on the lookout for that on Sunday. I love you so much, little skeletons. And I hope you have a great evening. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.